What we're going to be going over here are diluted earnings per share for stock warrants and we're going to be using the treasury stock method to determine the stock warrants that would be included in our earnings per share here. Okay, so for example here, Corp A's diluted earnings per share is based on these facts here. First, they have net income for the year 20x2 here of $80,000 and we're going to be looking at our diluted earnings per share here for 20x2. Now, point two here, the only potentially dilutive securities that's outstanding were 1,000 stock warrants each exercisable here for two shares of common stock at $22 per share. So for each warrant that the warrant holders would own, uh, hold here they could exercise them or buy two shares here common stock and they'd have to pay $22 per share here for this common stock. And we're going to be looking at two cases here. Case one where the warrants here are issued during year 20x1. So for the year 20x2 they're going to be outstanding the entire year here and for case two this is where the warrants are issued here in 41x2. So they're only going to be outstanding here for nine months during the 20, year 20x2 that we're going to be looking at here. Now three, the common stock outstanding during year 20x2, we'd have 10,000 shares here common stock. Now the average market price here common stock during our 20x2 uh, year here was $40 per share. Okay, so next thing we have to do is we have to f look at whether or not these warrants are diluted here, so or would dilute our earnings per share. So this is where we're going to looking at our dilution versus anti-dilution here for earnings per share. Now, a company includes the diluted earnings per share here for stock options and warrants outstanding whether or not they're presently exercisable unless they are anti-dilutive and if they are anti-dilutive they wouldn't be included here in the earnings or diluted earnings per share. So this is what we have to look at. We're going to look at our stock options or warrants outstanding here. And we're, we're look, concentrating on warrants in this example, but it would be the same here for stock options. Okay, so we're going to look at the case here, the diluted dilution of our earnings per share here versus anti-diluted dilution of our earnings per share. So for diluted earnings per share here, this is where the excise price here on this warrant here would be less than the market price on our common stock. So assuming that these uh, warrants would be exercised, then there would be a dilution here and that would increase the number common stocks outstanding because there would you'd be having to in a uh issue more common stock when these warrants were exercised. And by issuing more common stock, increasing your common stock, that would re reduce your earnings per share. Now, in this case, it would be included in your diluted earnings per share as reported on your financial statement. And this is where we're going to, it's going to involve this treasury stock method. So just looking at our example here, our warrant exercise, our exercise price using that warrant to buy a common stock here is $22. And the market price here for a common stock is $40. So you can see that the exercise price here is less than the market price. So the warrants are dilutive. Now, there's also the case here where warrants may require other than cash cash exchange to acquire the stock such as a debt securities would be exchanged. Now that becomes a complex issue here and we're not going to deal with that. We're only looking at cash exchange here to buy those common stock using the warrants. Okay, so now the other case is here looking at just anti-dilution of our earnings per share. This is where the exercise price of that warrant here would be greater than the market price. And that would be have an anti-dilution and that would reduces the number of common stocks out here. And that's if you go through all the equations and do that. And and that by doing that, it would increase the earnings per share. But we cannot do that here. If it's anti-dilutive, it can't be included. If those um, warrants were anti-dilutive, they couldn't be included here in the earnings per share. So, because you can't be increasing your earnings per share based on those warrants. And in that case, it would, again, they would not be included in the diluted earnings per share here reported in the financial statements. Okay, so here we're going to be, let's go up and we're going to use this treasury stock method here to determine those stock warrants and how they affect our diluted earnings per share. Okay. Okay, so here's our treasury stock method and we're going to go through this treasury stock method here just using the logic and how you would, de and what we want to do is we want to determine the total common stocks outstanding with those warrants here and how those warrants would be included uh, to determine the uh, total potential of com uh, potential common stocks that would be outstanding plus the total common stock that's average total common stock that's outstanding per year here. So this is what we would do here. 
using this treasury stock method we start out with the number of warrant shares here well we had a thousand warrants here and you could buy two comments or two shares here per warrant so you're going to have a total of uh, warrant shares here of two thousand now we take our warrant price here per share that we were given at twenty two dollars per share here we take that times those total warrant shares here of two thousand and we're going to get the what we call the well the proceeds for exercising all those warrants what we would receive here the company they would receive is $44,000 simply $22 per share times the total warrant shares out here of 2000 okay now we take our average market price common stock that we had given at $40 per share so you can see our market price here is greater than uh, $40 is greater than our warrant price here $22 okay now is where this treasury stock comes uh, at method comes into effect here we have to take the treasury stock that could be repurchased with those proceeds that we receive here on the exercise of this warrant so our proceeds that we receive here is 44,000 and we divide that by the average market price here for the common stock at $40 uh, that division gives us 1100 shares here of treasury stock that could be repurchased of based on those proceeds here of 44,000 and our average market price here for common stock of $40 okay so that's our what we would the that's the that's the treasury stock that could be repurchased okay so now what we want to do is look at our excess warrant shares over the treasury stock shares that are repurchased so this is the case here where we take the our uh, total warrant shares 2000 here and our we subtract out our treasury stock shares that could be repurchased here 1100 so we take the 2000 here less the 1100 treasury stocks and we get the difference gives us 900 shares here that's what we call the incremental share so that's what's going to be our dilutive effect here due to the stock warrant so that's what we had to calculate here 900 shares simply the 2000 here a warrant shares here less what we could repurchase this treasury stock here of 1100 shares okay so we've got this excess excess of our warrant shares over our treasury stock shares here 900 or inc uh, that's our incremental shares here then we have the average common stock that's outstanding here for the year 10,000 so adding those together here we're going to get our total common stock outstanding plus the potential common stock that based on those warrants that were exercised so that gives us 10,900 uh, shares. So 900 shares here, incremental shares plus the average shares outstanding at 10,000. Now, there we now we just take our net income for the year, say it's 80,000 here, divide those total shares plus those uh, incremental shares 10,000 900 into it and we're going to get our earnings per share here of seven dollars and 34 cents okay so we went through all the logic here using this treasury stock method now we could this all can be put down into one equation here where this is where we, we have to determine incremental number of shares and we simply go through our little equation our little formula here so we wouldn't have to go through all those uh, that all that all those additions and subtractions up above so this is our formula this is it here we take the market price here of the common stock that's the market average market price for the year here and we subtract the warrant price that's the price per share here for each of the warrants and we divide that by the total mark or the market price per share so we're dealing with a per share basis here market price per share here uh, less the warrant price divided by the uh, market price again here and we take that quantity times those number of warrants or the number of shares through those warrants that we calculated up there and that's going to give us uh, the number of shares and these number of shares here those are equal to what we calculated up here is our incremental number of shares the increase here so just going down and looking at our numbers using this equation here well we have the market price of forty dollars here per share warrant price at twenty two dollars divide that by the forty dollar market price here and we take that by times the total number of warrant shares here of 2000 that we calculated and that quantity here is going to give us 900 here incremental shares and that's the same as we calculated up here 900 so here's the case just use the formula here to determine the number of shares that those warrants would um, are going to affect the diluted earnings per share and again this 900 here that's based on the warrants that were issued here for the entire year here at 20x2 so that's for the entire year now to determine our diluted earnings per share here 
just use our general for our formula here where you take your net income here and you divide it by in this case the total number of common shares outstanding plus those potential shares that could be converted here through those warrants that was our incremental shares or a number of shares that we calculated up here in num incremental shares that'll give us our diluted earnings per share so just taking our net income for the year here 80,000 plus 10,000 here are common shares outstanding plus the incremental number of shares of those potential shares here that could be converted to 900 that we calculated that uh, division here or quantity divided here is going to give us seven dollars and thirty four cents per share that's our diluted earnings per share here okay that takes care of the case here where these warrants were issued here uh, for the entire year and we had to go back to and assume that the warrants were outstanding for the uh, again the warrants were issued here in the prior year so they were uh, outstanding for the entire year and that's the case where you have to go back and you have to look at the exercise as of the beginning of the year okay so now let's look at the case here where they were issued after the beginning of the year here and we got really a partial year to deal with so this is where the case where the warrants were issued here on 41x2 so we have 41 through 1231 the end of year 20x2 which is nine months so all we have to do to calculate our diluted earnings per share, just go through our formula again here. A $40 market price minus the $22 warrant price divided by $40 market price here uh, per share times, again, those 2,000, in this case, the 2,000 warrant shares here that um, for based on our warrants here for the number of shares that can a common stock that can be purchased times just a fraction of the year that they're outstanding here so we were dealing with nine months that were remaining here from 4 1 through 12 31 that's nine months divided by 12 months in a year so we got nine twelfths here times our quantity here that's going to give us 675 um, uh, number of shares here or that's those uh, those that incremental shares that we'd be adding to the common shares that are a number of average common stocks outstanding so here we de determine that incremental number here to be 675 here so divide 10,000 shares outstanding here plus the incremental increase here 675 shares and divide that into our net income for the year 80,000 and we're going to get our diluted earnings per share here at seven dollars and 49 cents so that's that's the case here now if we go and we just compare it to our basic earnings per share here now with the basic earnings per share you don't include any of those diluted or the dilutive effect here for the warrant so you just take your net income of 80,000 divide it by the 10,000 shares of average average shares of common stock outstanding you get your basic earnings per share here of eight dollars per share come and you can compare that to the diluted earnings per share here you can see the dilutive effect due to those stock warrants here seven dollars and 34 cents here versus the basic earnings per share here of eight dollars and then when we we're looking at that a fraction of a year here where those um, the uh, warrants were outstanding here you can see that it increased a little bit because they were outstanding for lesser part of a year here than the total year so that it increased to seven dollars and 49 cents but it was still less than our basic earnings per share here of eight dollars okay so let's go back one more time here to look at go over our numbers here so uh, we went through this treasury stock method here to determine the number of shares here that would be involved or incremental number of shares that would be increased due to these warrants here just to go through it again market price here general formula market price here less the warrant price and a per share basis divided by our market price here on a per share market price of our common stock here on a per share basis times these number of warrant shares here actually the number of warrant shares that would be uh, we'd have here uh, that quantity times that quantity that's going to give our number of shares incremental shares and that's what we use here as the potential shares or the incremental number of shares that would be average added to the number of average common stock shares outstanding and divide your shares average shares of common stock plus those potential or incremental shares add those together and divide it into your net income here for the year and you're going to get your diluted earnings per share okay so we went over both cases here where the warrants were issued here um, 
for the entire year when you look at you bring them back to the beginning of the year here and then we also looked at the case here where the issued for part of the year here and we've taken care of it so and, and just remember here that this is where these warrants had a dilutive effect here and we calculated a diluted earnings per share for these warrants.